Ringo and Vox, etc. Um, and I think it's a little risky strategy for sure. Yeah, and it, it's weird, isn't it? Because when you think of Hondo, or last season when you thought of Hondo, you would immediately think of Baron, similar to how best Struck NA is right now. <laughs> but it's not really been the, the the theme for G2 recently. This time they're going to ban Vox, so maybe right. going against what we've just <laughs> talked about. Maybe that Rust has fallen off and they now know to prioritize that Baron. So let's see if they do first pick it or they're going to go ahead and pick up that Lyra. So Lyra will be picked up, which then leaves Baron open and Idris. So if anything, Salty Potatoes could pick up that Idris and then ban away the Baron because you don't want to give G2 that Baron Lyra combination. So let's see what Salty Potato decides. Or they could just go ahead and grab Baron and then ban away the Idris, you know, either or. I think both are very, very strong. And it's really just a matter of personal preference at that point for what your carry wants. But they're going to take Kestrel. the Kestrel. Well, the Kestrel definitely something that can be flexed uh, yeah. between both jungle and carry roles. So a, a decent first pick, not a first pick, <laughs> first pick, <laughs> not something that we see all too often this early in the draft. Yeah, though. Kestrel is, works here because she does 130% basic at attack damage on her arrows or glimmer shots. A lot of damage against a Lyra, which is not really a good frontline against a Kestrel, a weapon Kestrel especially, and a crystal Kestrel. So I do like that pick into Lyra. Of course, then you have to ban the Baron because Baron is good into um, everything good with Lyra and good <laughs> into everything in general. So now um, for G2, they definitely should not ban Idris here. On the B side, they should ban something like uh, a, a support or a, a jungler that they don't want to give Salty Potatoes. So like Samuel is a good ban. Samuel Kestro is normally the, the meta in terms of like strong carries after Baron and Vox are taken off the table. So it's a really good ban here from G2. Yeah, I actually, I, I'm almost wondering if Salty Potatoes were hoping to get the Kestrel Samuel and try and bait G2 into an Idris pick because the, the Kestrel and Samuel have both been used quite frequently of late to try and counter out the Idris. So I think that may have been the plan for Salty Potatoes, or at least the initial plan. And uh, G2 sort of sniffing that out, taking that Samuel off the board is a really smart ban. Yeah, Grump Jaw going to be the lock-in though. So this could well be that jungler with Kestrel going on into the lane. Grumpjaw, again, we've had this conversation before. He kind of fell off a little bit. Team stopped prioritizing him in the same way, but definitely a pick that can have huge impact on the game if you can get that ball rolling right at the start. Yeah, has a ton of early game burst, but Scarf has been one of the very frequent counters to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really Scarf and Kestrel. So Salt Potatoes, they took away one of them, but with the Scarf still available, G2 are going to be more than happy to lock that in. It does sort of go against you know, Dark Potato's typical playstyle. He usually excels on more of the bruiser type heroes, but Scarf is just so strong in the current meta. Yeah, and Scarf, almost 62% win ratio right now. Very, very strong pick. And Idris as well, going to be the final lock-in for G2. So they've got their composition locked on in now as we look over towards Salty Potatoes. How do you finish out this composition? What captain really fits this right now? Yeah, I think they may switch the Grumpjaw to a captain position because um, Grumpjaw is actually not that strong into Scarf because Scarf's passive burn actually removes his stacks really quickly and that weakens Grumpjaw uh, immediately. And we saw Grumpjaw actually lose multiple times to a Scarf jungle um, in the EU matchup that we've seen in the challenge battles and week four of split one. So I think this will most likely move to a captain position Grumpjaw and then they're gonna go with a CP Blackfeather here, I'm assuming. Or would that be a weapon Blackfeather in lane and a CP Kestrel? I think the you could really go with either one. Mm -hmm. I think both are going to have about the same amount of success against an Idris. It's really just who you feel is going to be able to pressure the Scarf out of the jungle because you need to get that pressure onto Scarf and really onto Idris as well. It's a very late game composition for G2 and Salty Potatoes are going to have to find ways to win in the early game. Yeah, potentially about what people are more comfortable playing as well. Bear in mind, this is a team that has just now qualified for the Vainglory 8. Within challenges, it's usually a lot more about comfort picks and slightly less about meta, but that's something that has to change coming in here. Yeah, it's actually, now that you mentioned comfort picks, it's very likely going to be the Black Feather in the lane because it's sneaky. I completely, yeah. I don't know how I, I forgot about the sneaky, Black Feather, the two go hand in hand. His Black Feather is absolutely incredible. All right, well, it's just about time to get on into this one. Let us know who you want to win on this first game of the Vainglory 8 today. Hashtag Vainglory 8 on Twitter. Do you believe in the G2 rise to power once more? Do you believe in the challenge battles making a stand here? Salty Potatoes up against G2. Let's start the day.
Do you believe in the dark potato or do you believe in the salty potatoes? Jackson, this is going to be a fabulous way to start split two. This is an exciting matchup. How are you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how G2 has progressed, actually, from last split. Um, obviously, it, there's a great storyline here with the new challenger team. How are they going to do? But G2, they tweeted about the fact that actually, last time around, they didn't have the, the most practice in split number one, for example. So are they going to be able to show us that they've gone away and like really practiced up and, and become the team that they used to be? Because they used to be, Humanist, probably one of the best teams in the region. Oh, I would definitely say they were. We're having a little bit of fun uh, down here in the jungle, Keanu and class poking each other back and forth. But yeah, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. You put out a tweet like that, right? You're like, okay, yeah, we made it. We weren't playing, uh, practicing too much. But now you say you're going to be practicing. You better show up and deliver. Oh, absolutely. So looking at the beginning of this game here, let's start talking about what these compositions are trying to do a little bit. Obviously, you've got a very strong late game composition on the side of G2. This is exactly the kind of comp that I think they're pretty happy to get, just in terms of what their team likes to do. On the other hand, though, pretty strong aggression uh, coming out of Salty Potatoes. Keanu, he's got to be a little bit careful here. I like trying to steal it away, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, Keanu, he's one of those playmakers, so he's going to try and steal it away. I think having the boots allows him to, to make those kind of plays. And you see Hundor taking a bit of damage as class moves up into the lane. Keanu is here, waiting in the left mustache brush, ready to back his ally up. Keanu put two points into the sigil to start off, so he's not even worried about that bright bulwark. Just get as much heal early on as possible. Yeah, and I think that's pretty smart, to be honest. Uh, you've got a lot of damage coming out of the side of Salt Potatoes, and yeah, Bulwark might stop some of it if you if you stop Class, for example, uh, from getting there. Oh, Potato. Potato, he's gonna have to get back with that move speed, but a lot of damage, they've caught him. Dark Potato looks like he might be first blood. Dips back to the east side and will go down on the wrong side of the map. First blood for the Salty Potatoes. Very nice stuff there. They were able to punish G2 for biting off a little bit more than they could chew there. And I, I've got to be honest, it surprises me that Dark Potato and, and Co. decided to go so aggressive early on. This is a composition that scales very nicely. Yes, you always want to be opportunistic in Vainglory. You always want to take the chances that you see. But at the same time, you've got to be careful not to get ahead of yourself. And that was, uh, I believe, what G2 were, do excuse me, were doing there. Right now, though, this has given a lot of confidence to Salty Potatoes to try and move up and actually pressure G2 a little bit. They do need to be careful as well, though. Dark Potato, obviously Scarf, uh, has a lot of damage early on just by virtue of the fact that in the jungle you get levels very quickly and levels in your abilities do a lot of work. Absolutely. I mean, positioning is a huge thing with Scarf. Not having your boots active could be a really big deal. Keanu is going to move forward. He sees Clast here hanging out with Sneaky. Sneaky just needs to continue to farm. This weapon castle needs to get multiple weapon items to start to have a serious impact here. And uh, Joker just hanging out in the jungle wants to get his full rotation while the pressure starts to apply from G2. Dark Potato gets that ignited goop onto the turret here. A little bit of damage coming out, maybe just buying them some time to get back and purchase some items. Yeah, and that's certainly something they need to be doing here, uh, trying to get those up early on. I love how Salty Potatoes has been controlling this Elder Treant, by the way. They've had it on spawn a bunch of times, I think maybe even three now. It's a pretty solid position to be in here, uh, and it does give them a lot of early advantage. You can see they have accrued a couple of hundred gold off the back. They're definitely a composition that spikes pretty early, uh, as we said earlier, compared to G2. So the question is, when and where are they going to be able to really apply uh, the pressure that their comp can? I think a big spike for them is going to be the first item on Joker and Sneaky. They're going to have a lot of poke damage, and it's actually going to be very difficult for G2 to deal with early on here. What's going to be pretty crazy is if, like, if Class can use his ultimate and pull a target back, into like an active camo, it could be really hard to deal with that. You could just be locked down burst uh, if they're able to, to have really clean synergy on these engages. Joker moves up, class is grumpy, but Hundor is getting a heal up. I think he didn't quite catch the move speed buff there. Bright Bulwark slowing him down just enough. Joker really hungry for that kill. He's gonna catch a Spitfire on his way down into the jungle class as well that that scout trap doing a lot of work they will eventually pop it off it's gonna be a popped off plus the goop ignite burning class down he's just so tanky though yeah class of course with that passive 
is very, very tanky. Look at the damage, though. Oh, the right back end. Keanu, you're in a bad place. Keanu, how is he able to get out of that one? I thought that was, that was a dead Lyra for sure. Yeah, I did as well. I think there was a little bit of mixed target fish. You see Hundor took some chip damage there. And certainly uh, that is something which, um, you know, ideally you want the target focus to be exclusively on the person you're going for. Uh, but still, you can see Solid Potatoes being very proactive. That's certainly a, a very good thing for them to be doing. They need to be proactive and aggressive uh, in order to stop the scaling out of G2. And they're very tight as a unit. I mean, this is not something you expect necessarily to see out of a team that was formerly in Challenger in their first week of the Vainglory. They look very tight-knit. They look like they have their rotations on point. And these are things that normally take a little while for these teams. Yeah, it normally does. I think, you know, Sneaky has pro experience, classed a very high level player. The Joker obviously fits in with these guys very well, and uh, they're showing us they deserve to be here for sure. Right now, G2 once again as a group, Dark Potato is just gonna continue to throw Spitfires. And you see when he connects on that Kestrel, a lot of damage. And there they come through with that on point from the Joker, letting him know, hey man, we've got the poke too. But Joker, Rose defensive back as Hundor jumps forward. A two man on point will connect. Both teams just poke back and forth. You see the jump in by Joker, but quickly right back out. Sneaky has to be evasive. Can't get locked down. Cannot be caught in a goop as a weapon Kestrel. That is not the play. Sneaky did complete that Sorrow Blade. We see a lot of different builds for the weapon Kestrel in the lane. Is this something that you like? Do you agree with this? Uh, you know, I think it's fine. It definitely does do a lot of damage early on, and it gives you the ability to, to team fight a little bit earlier uh, in, in some situations. But you can see. The aggression out of G2 again. Have they finally gone too far is the question. I mean, it looks like they're going to be able to back up. Dark Potato's actually committing to this fight. Dark Potato's going to roast some potatoes of his own. He knows how to play. He jumps in there, but that's a dangerous position to be in. It will force the Fountain to come out of Salty Potatoes. An interesting position to be in. Both teams burning their Fountain just kind of right back where they started. Yeah, no one is really able to make any of this damage and pressure stick. It's kind of a war of attrition between the two teams right now. That being said, I, I think, you know, as you might expect, this is something that benefits G2, given that they'd like to scale quite nicely. Um, I think Salty Potatoes needs to focus on making sure that they find that flank angle uh, with Sneaky. You know, he, he at the moment has just been uh, having to deal with the incredible push pressure coming out of Dark Potato in order to get farm. But if you want to go for the aggressive play, I think you should back out out of vision a little bit move up to that top bush in stealth and then try and unload on someone as you know joker dives in onto the back line and distracts them uh quite a bit i really like that idea especially because they have control uh with that scout trap they've had control over the top rush for quite a while now g2 once again as a unit here dark potato throwing spitfires looking to connect onto the kestrel class will eat one sneaky did eat the previous one and right now they just have a massive range advantage until Joker gets up here. Joker makes his way up, but you see G2 is kind of repositioned. He doesn't really have an angle to go. Uh, he, does, he doesn't want to move forward and miss an on point. You always want to make sure you're hitting those so you can actually trade. Hundor does get hit, takes decent damage at this point. You see the Shatter Glass starting to stack up the damage coming through for this Crystal Power Black Feather. I really like that we're seeing this tension bow out of Sneaky, actually. Again, I, I think they need to be applying a lot of pressure. This is one way to start doing that a little bit more strongly. Let's see if they can actually make something happen. Whoa, Arcane Passage for G2 knew they needed to get back up here. A lot of damage as that stuff came out in class, pulling him right back. Hundor is down. Dark Potato, though, standing his ground, has the goop, the ignite. You're not that tanky, though. Get back, Scarf. Oh. He's down. They've lost two. They're going to lose three. Is this going to be the ace? Yana, what are you going to do? He's down four to zero. Salty Potatoes, too. man. Wow, that was really, really nice stuff there. Uh, very aggressive play out of Salty Potatoes, but it works, and it was right off the back of that item spike that they had. There's also uh, one or two things missing from G2. Like, for example, this Crucible just got finished after the fight uh, from their opponents, and certainly uh, it, it's something you really would have liked to have uh, in that fight. You know, being able to give that shield to your whole team could have been the difference. Yeah. Um, but that being said, Salt Potatoes, they timed it perfectly. Like, they knew that they had this spike. It's time to go aggressive. It's time to make something happen. And they did. They find a turret as well. Look at the gold advantage they have. 3,000. That's the kind of thing which translates to a real tangible, like, item lead. Oh, it's a serious lead at this point. It's also something that starts to stack up uh, on the mentality of these players. They, they know 
that they want to uh, stay as close as they can. You know, you, you maybe you have a little bit of a late game advantage, but it's not that much. I mean, a weapon Kestrel in the late game, a CP Black Feather in late game, nothing to shake a stick at. It's gonna be, uh, once again, class, he's stuffed up, moves back, it's Keanu though, the target, they move out of the active camo Joker, he's on the Dark Potato on the backside, can't find the kill, but class is there, he's repositioned, class, he is so grumpy, moving forward, finding the damage, finding the kill, sneaky, finally in position for a couple glimmer shots, can't quite connect, one shot, one kill, threads the needle off the mark, and Hundor, Keanu are going to be able to live through this thanks to all the healing coming out there. Once again, the aggression. Can oh, G2 get down here and drop now. into the jungle? Joker taking a lot of damage. They underestimated G2's potential, and the Joker will go down. That felt like a, a bit of a misplay there, Jax. And Keanu's trading, though, right here. He can't live through Sneaky's basic oh, no. attack, but Sneaky goes down to Hondor. These guys, they're, they're just throwing blows. Man, if Sneaky had been with the rest of the team backing them up, uh, maybe that goes a little bit differently. It's kind of a rough spot, actually, for the side of uh, Salty Potatoes there. They I had been commending them on their rotations earlier on, but they, I think, dropped the ball a little bit. Now, you can see G2 pulling back a decent amount. They've closed that gold lead by about a 1,000 off of that. And on top of that, they've also managed to get themselves that turret, which is huge, because it means they have much more pressure on the map. They have to be afraid of a few less, at the very least, um, avenues of attack coming out of their opponents. This is really, really solid position for G2 to be in, considering how far behind they were falling. Yeah, and it's not like one of those things where, like, they're like, okay, and now we're going to barely get a turret off the back of this fight. Like, they just melted through it. So it shows potential. Wait, hold on. We have the engage portal through with the bright board. They are on top of Sneaky. He's going to be able to try and find the stun. He's there. Basic attacks out. The Hundor oh. will be melted down. They find two. G2 falling nice. apart. They lost all three. A clean A. Salty Potatoes turning that one around. And they were not the aggressors. Wow, that was really, really nicely played by Salty Potatoes. They are starting to really turn up the heat. If you make a mistake like you did earlier on and a fight doesn't go your way, it can be okay so long as it's just one and you really do tighten up your game afterwards. And you saw it there. I mean, they, they really did. Sneaky especially had some really fantastic play uh, by himself. I was really, really impressed by how he was able to play in that team fight, the way he used his stealth to mm -hmm. get out of there, mess up Humdor's ability to go in. Uh, really okay. solid. You know, that's what you got to do as weapon cast where you got to be a little bit slippery. It's, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm not even playing around. It's one of my favorite things to see is that when a player will build all offense, no defense. Yeah, you got some boots, but with like this weapon caster, like you said, it's just about being sneaky. And he's living up to his name here, just elusive through the fights. You get that active camo down to reposition and then just blow up a target. And you can take them down way faster than they can take you down. We're seeing right now, Salty Potatoes playing to their advantages. G2 a little bit forward in the lane. They know what's going on. Salty Potatoes with the flank. They're gonna clear out the, the minion wave back here on the backside now. G2, what's the play? Keanu on the front side. Dark Potato is going to miss with the first bit fire. Thundor is throwing the Chakrams, trying to connect here. It looks like they'll have a window to rotate down. Maybe trying to pull him into the choke point here. Bright Bull works down. That's going to be a oh long boy. pull down. Big on. Oh. They jump right on the Sneaky and melt him. Hundor has all the damage in the world and did some. Chakrams coming out as they look to chase. And it should be Joker able to get back, using that Rose Offensive to reposition himself. Class had to burn the Fountain, the Atlas Pauldron as well, and the War Tread. A big win for G2. You know, that honestly looked kind of good for Salt Potatoes right at the very beginning, but then they walked too far into that choke point. They'd burned a lot of abilities. Imperial Sigil was on cooldown. Bright Bulwark was on cooldown. Right now, Clast might be on cooldown for a second. No, he's going to be able to get out of there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it looked optimistic, but then they didn't really fully commit quickly enough, and it gave time for the setup of the goop, etc., uh, from Dark Potato to come down. Sneaky, if you get that low is just going to die. There's not that many strong defensive tools uh, on the side of Salty Potatoes to deal with the kind of snap and gauge that a Lyra can provide. Oh man, and Keanu Nikoa, he has been so quick with his portals and bright bulwarks. When he goes, I mean, it's just a, such a quick decision. Now Salty Potatoes moving forward under the Crystal Sentry. They have a serious advantage. Clast is going to be stuffed up, pulling Dark Potato backwards. This is going to be a bad place to pay for a use carve. He's down. They've lost, too, as Hundor fell. And Keanu, uh, he already burned that Arcane Passage. Looks like he's going to go down as well. And, well, uh, maybe he's starting to regret some of the tweets he put out earlier, man, because Salty Potatoes just running over G2.
man, G2, they got to shape up for next game. Uh, this was, was, aside from that one turnaround fight, not a game that they looked very good in. Salty Potatoes just annihilated a team that was formerly the best in Europe after supposedly they went away and, and you know, already tightened up, already Double started kill. to get some more practice in. Humanists, <laughs> this is, I mean, this is pretty surprising to me, but these Challenger teams coming up in the Vainglory 8, they're hungry. Is there no joke? Oh, they are hungry indeed. I think we can tell with the Grump Jaw pick there for sure. Class make it play, Sneaky Joker. It was a tight, tight play all around from all these guys. I, it's exciting to see, but we saw there were obviously some weaknesses in their gameplay, even being ahead. Um, maybe they lose a fight and then quickly lost some objectives going the other way. Um, but exciting stuff. To go ahead and break this one down, let's go ahead and throw it back to our analyst desk. Thank you very much, guys. What a way to come on into the Vainglory 8. Salty Potatoes managing to take their first game. We already mentioned it last week in the challenge battles. 2-0 to G2. Salty Potatoes already turning that on its head. Yeah, doing a great job with this first game. Much more aggressive, much more decisive for this team. They were looking for fights. Mm -hmm. They were when they had their opportunities, and they were able to make it count. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, we talked about before the game how Salty Potatoes weren't able to like pressure the advantages they got previously. They certainly did in this game. They turned an advantage in the early game with the Grimshaw into a victory. Yeah, and I knew they would do well as long as they played confident with Sneaky and Joker. And I knew G2 would struggle because when G2 faces a team that is decisive and pressures them, they they tend to struggle. And and it, that's exactly what played out in this game. Yeah, now there was, there was a defining moment in this game. At around the 8 minute 20 mark, there was a specific power strike for, a power spike, sorry, for the Kestrel. And it was such a beautiful fight. Yeah, and I them. called it the defining fight too for Salty Potatoes for sure, because Kestrel has a Sword Blade, a Tension Bow, a Grumpjaw has his Fountain, and Blackfeather has a Shatter Glass. So they then made a play off this power spike, and it was huge for them. Getting this ace, was amazing for Salty Potatoes. Then they get the first turret, right? And then they get the gold mine, and that gives them a 3k gold lead, which then allows them to continue to snowball. And when Kestrel gets ahead and she gets so much damage, she'll start, she'll start blowing up opponents. Yeah, and that's the point where we saw the change between last week and this week's Salty Potatoes, where once they have that advantage, they start to run away with it. Yeah, and there were multiple fights where they played them very similarly, of just pick one target, absolutely annihilate them and then just win out a two versus three fight from there and they were able to do this time and time again whether it was scarf or idris being isolated you know started off the game in a similar fashion finding the scarf on his own for the first blood but you can see you know, all throughout the game whenever it was a team fight the salty shows were winning it was one target just getting focused right from the get-go yeah, for sure. And you can see keanu trying to start the fights they're trying to be proactive and make sure g2 can get back in but at this point, it felt like Salty Potatoes were just so on top of their game. Class just grabs someone up and turns it into a 2v3 anyway. Yeah, that one fight, Idris, I wish he held onto his ult a little longer because for his ultimate, he can actually stay in an enemy carry for 1.2 seconds. Mm -hmm. If he waited for an arrow and then jumped out and not get hit by the arrow, maybe the fight would have been different. But it was unfortunate for G2 there. Yeah, it certainly was. An unfortunate game for G2. And they are now 1-0 down in this series. We've already mentioned how important the points are for both of these teams, right? If they want to get to Unified Live, they have to get these points on the board. Not long left in the Vainglory 8. I'm impressed by Salty Potatoes. They've improved clearly in their gameplay. Let's talk a little bit about the draft, though. Suijay, we were talking during that game about how different this Salty Potatoes draft is to what we saw last week from them. Yeah, for sure. With Salty Potatoes, they didn't run a Grumpjaw captain. Um, and they had a great pick. They, they didn't run it as a jungler because it would be countered by the Scarf. They used it with in combination with the Kestrel Camel Traps and picked a Black Feather to then play against the Scarf, poke, and then dive the Scarf. So they actually did a really good job of, of drafting very differently from what they did in the Challenger series. Not only that, but they've now added an extra layer to their compositions. Like typically, from Salty Potatoes, if Black Feather was picked, it was going on Sneaky every single time. Yep. Now they've been able to win with Sneaky playing something other than the Black Feather while they still have it on the team, like letting the Joker play it instead. And that just adds more that you have to think about. Like You have to worry about now when Black Feather is picked, where exactly it's going to end up it, going. It's almost like playing mind games with your opponents, right? It's a flex pick that they think is going one way, but maybe it's not, and then they start to play tricks on themselves. Salty Potatoes banning out the Grump Jaw here with a response of a grace from G2, and then Lyra, once again, the first pick. Yeah, and I think with Lyra being picked up here, G2 will most likely, since they favor Vox, will probably pick up the Vox and ban the Baron away. 
um, from Salty Potato since that's a very strong combination, Baron and Lyra. Now Salty Potato will probably take away and deny either Kestrel or, or Samuel here because um, Samuel is a strong char character that G2 plays really well with Vox. So let's see what Salty Potato decides. Samuel is going to beat the ban once again. That's the, the fourth ban that we've seen both games in this series now with Baron being the third and now looking towards G2, deciding what to pair up with a Vox here. A lot still on the table for them. Yeah, definitely still a lot of power picks available. You know, Idris wasn't really that great for Hondor last game. And so uh, I'm worried that they might end up struggling going up against it because now Salty Potatoes are going to be able to pick it up with the Vox already secured. So obviously, you know, Idris isn't going to be taken by G2 here. Yeah, they're probably going to take... Potatoes like, should be able to grab it. Yeah, they're probably going to take a captain. I thought they would take Arden because G2 has actually preferred Arden recently. Mm -hmm. So with Lance coming out, they're changing things up a little bit. And Keanu is a really solid Lance. And I feel like Lance is better into Lyra than Arden is anyways. So as long as they lock an opponent down and, you know, CC them with the Githian wall, uh, Lance Vox is a pretty deadly combo. Yeah, and Lance especially is one of these captains that I, I feel like he has unlimited potential in any game. If you can execute with a Lance, you can have so much impact individually on that series. We'll see whether Keanu can bring that into play. They're going to need to as they are 1-0 down. Kestrel going to be the lock-in here for Salty Potatoes. They're going back to that comfort. If it works, why, why change it up if they yep. were able to find such a strong performance, I wouldn't even be surprised if they grabbed themselves the Black Feather to finish off this composition and just run the exact same thing that they just did in game one. Yeah, they may do that or run Scarf. They have to run Scarf if Samuel's not up. Samuel is their preferred jungler based on their past six, seven drafts I've looked at. So maybe Scarf could be picked up here for them, but I think uh, from, from what Bacon is saying, CP Blackfire makes a lot of sense because he can dodge the Lance root and, and put himself in a good position. So CP Blackfire is going to be picked up. So that leaves G2 with a few options here. For example, G2 has played um, Rhyme. <laughs> so is Rhyme going to be picked up to counter his Blackfire? Probably not, I feel. Um, I think for them, they also tried Alpha to some degree, but Alpha has kind of yeah. fallen off the meta, so let's see if they decide to pick that into the composition of Salty Potatoes it, here. It definitely feels like G2 are more than happy to pick something that's not necessarily meta, but goes specifically well into a composition. Are there any uh, heroes specifically that would go against a Kestrel and Blackfeather and match up pick incredibly well? Yeah, maybe Bat Batiste potentially, but I haven't seen them really play Batiste though, so that could come out if they do play it. Or they could even go for um, a, a jungle scarf potentially here, you know. But I feel like yeah. based on what their draft has, oh wow, cruel comes cruel. out. That's that's a that's very risky. that's really yeah, risky. risky going into especially a Kestrel and a Lyra. The cruel is a very very risky pickup. But Dark Potato is definitely one of the top cruel players. And so there is a chance that he can make this work, but it's going to be a tough, tough game. Yeah, it certainly is. I, we have a couple of highlights of Krull as well to show you guys, but the, I, I'm interested to see it alongside of Vox because you would assume that both are weapon power. Obviously, both can be CP, but it's not something that we've typically seen recently. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been seeing a lot of the double weapon powers with Krull. Yeah, usually with someone that has a lot more burst, like an Idris or uh, a Baron, but uh, I think we've seen it once or twice with the Vox as well. It's just a pick that... You can get onto a target and get those weakness stacks building up quickly. The big stuns and slows that can come out allows that hyper carry to then really just dish out damage throughout the team fight. And so it, I feel like the idea behind this double weapon composition works really well for G2 style. All right, well, we'll see if it is going to work for them. It's crunch time for G2. They are 1-0 down in the series. This desperation pick of Krull potentially. We'll see if it's going to work out as we head onto the Halcyon Fold for the second game in the series. Hashtag Vainglory8. Let us know who you're supporting. Salty Potatoes up against G2. That's right. Hashtag Vainglory8. Get your tweets out there. Get on stream. Become a legend. Uh, tap into your true <laughs> potential. Here in game two, though, Jackson, this is going to be pretty exciting. Do we have a desperation crawl pick or a pocket pick? Something special. Yeah, I mean, the, the crawl pick's pretty interesting. Obviously, this is something that Dark Potato has played since the beginning of time. I think the first game I ever cast of him was on crawl, actually, now that I think about it. But I think your first pun is, ever uh, made was a Dark oh, Potato. Oh, definitely. Definitely, it was a dark potato pun. I've I've used them all though. Like I can't I can't dip back into the ones I've already used. And I've you just gotta wait all. for it to come back around. 
You'll get back I, to the point where you can just start over again. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Sometimes my puns can be weapons of mash destruction. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> Go for it this game. All right. Okay, now. Let's let's be let's be real for a second though. This Kroll's infant, you know, he picked it into a Kestrel. You, you heard Bacon talking about it. Picked it into a Lyra. These are things it doesn't necessarily deal that well with. What I do think is kind of interesting though is that he's not just running point by himself. He's backed up by Keanu Nakoa on the Lance, mm -hmm. and I think that that can mitigate some of the problems that Kroll can have when it comes to dealing with something like Kestrel, because Keanu Nakoa can kind of just take that bullet or that arrow in this case jump forward into the active camo area and be threatening enough that Kestrel has no choice but to try and stun the Lance. And in that situation, Dark Potato pops his tier three boots, he dives forward with Dead Man's Rush, and then suddenly Kestrel's actually in a very tough spot. Because once Kroll is on top of Kestrel, it's a very different story. You know, that's a very uh, good situation for the Kroll player. Oh, absolutely. I hope I literally get to say that play by play, word for word, the way you broke that down <laughs> later on. We'll uh, see. But that, we'll see. It, that's exactly where he wants to be. If if you can get on that Kestrel, a very squishy target indeed. But like you said, I mean, you mentioned tier three boots. Uh, having that boot active, the move speed is going to be super important for him. Dark Potato made his way up into uh, towards the lane, but it's going to dip right back down. He does find the Joker on that Black Feather. The Joker is just going to continue to move backwards, holding his boots, a bunch of weakness stacks building up, but nothing that Dark Potato can really follow up on. Yeah, Dark Potato's got to be careful here, actually, uh, with Clast and Joker so nearby. Maybe G2 wants to contest this Triant you saw last time, last game. So Potato's had it on lock. It's a good Bright Bulwark to really stop the initiation there, though. Dark Potato's not going to be able to do much against that uh, in these early game situations. Clast is a very aware player. Like, I mean, I, I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but he's, he's consciously predicting uh, enemy movements on, like, every hero across the board. And you see, like, a lot of professionals, they'll be, you know, apt on uh, a handful of heroes, and so they can really predict, like, you know, the super pro predictions only on those heroes that they're really good on. Class seems like every single skill shot that comes out or when someone's trying to steal a camp, like he just seems to predict everything so well. That being said, he was complaining in the pregame lobby about Grumpjaw ultimately being impossible to block. So he I guess know. he can't predict everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in any case, yeah, no, I agree with you. I think he, uh, he does himself a disservice. I think he is a very, very strong captain for just those reasons. Joker, got to be careful not to go too far down the rabbit hole here. If you chase on to Keanu and Nikoa, you got to know Dark Potato somewhere nearby. We're going to see another one of these fights over the Treant, potentially. I think, honestly, G2 should try and fight here, but they need to be very careful. Like, for example, right after this Imperial Sigil times out, that's a good time to go in. Because they've got another 10 seconds on cooldown this early into the game, and Lyra's basically then just got Jungle basic attacks. Um, but if you go in and Imperial Sigil's up, I think the sustain and the shield, etc., 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 is just a little bit too much uh, from Salted Potatoes. Regardless, now the item shop has spawned, so it's a little bit too late, but they did dissuade Salty Potatoes from taking another Elder Treant, so G2 succeeded at least in, in applying pressure onto the side of Salted Potatoes. Now you talk about uh, applying pressure and you know I'm watching the, the rotations through the jungle here. As we look at both of these teams compositionally, do G2 find themselves uh, in a disadvantage in the late game here with, with what they've drafted? You know, it, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, there's a lot of things that their composition can, can do which are dependent on like where you're standing. So for example, Lance becomes about two times better if you're fighting in a corridor. Um, so in that kind of situation, maybe they can make it happen. It, it restricts the directions that Sneaky can retreat. So Lance can be threatening, like we talked about earlier, jump forward with Impale, try and right. pop the active camo trap. But if they just fight like straight up in the lane or like by the item shop, uh, I, I think that Salt Potatoes does have an advantage later on. A uh, big thing here is, of course, that Crystal Black Feather. Very, very difficult to deal with unless you can make a snappy engage. And against Bright Bulwark, against active camo, actually dealing with the weaknesses of the Crystal Black Feather uh, could, could be kind of difficult. You know, those weaknesses are mitigated somewhat by the composition that Salty Potatoes are actually running. 
Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Super Patient play, like, waiting for that point. Now, Dark Potato has ultimate, but waiting for that point where a Joker will move up, miss his on point, and then you engage, knowing uh, exactly how you're going to play. Maybe get onto the Kestrel, lock a target down, especially maybe Sigil being on cooldown as well. Active camo, uh, sneaky just repositions, Whoa. but a lot of damage coming out on the class. They find the stun, everything. Potato. Dark Potato's ultimate as well. I really wasn't predicting them to just light classed up right underneath the turret, but wow, surprise, surprise. Yeah, that was a lot of damage coming out very, very quickly. Hundor does have that poison shiv already, which in that kind of situation is is just about as good as tension bow because you're not trying to find poke, trying to just get a lot of damage in a short window, and, and poison shiv with the attack speed can can help with that. Obviously, shuts down some of the healing, which makes it harder for class to get away. Uh, also, dark potato going for this tension bow build. I really, really like this build uh, on Kroll now. I've been messing around with it a little bit uh, in my games recently, and I have to say. I think it's very, very potent. Uh, when you dead man's rush in, you just hit someone for a lot of damage straight up. You've already got a high base damage on your ultimate. So mm -hmm. you actually have two abilities that come through and deal burst at the beginning of the fight. And you obviously have great burst at the end of the fight with your special smite. Um, that kill does actually more than it maybe looks like, by the way, because it slows down class experience gain too. So Kiana Nakoa is going to hit six. Uh, probably a little bit before classed, and maybe there's an opportunity for G2 to make a play uh, off the back of No Arcane Passage being available, or at the very least, it keeps them safe uh, from a from a play from that. So, always great when you can shut down the captain uh, before that level six. It, it seems like a, a kill where, oh, you know, I'd rather have a carry, sure, but it can actually facilitate future plays better than killing a carry in certain situations. Man, I think some of these players need need your communication skills when they're in comms with their teammate. They're like, why did you do that? You're like, well, let me tell you. This is exactly why. Dark Potato <laughs> the, the hanging out here. He's uh, planted of... himself in that left mustache brush, waiting for a target to appear. Has the ultimate ready to go if they want to engage once again. As you said, Keanu Nikoa will be hitting his level 6 very shortly here. That'll be a nice power spike for him just to have a little bit more, more mobility through these fights. Dark Potato is going to be spotted out as he dips back. Hondor going to go to the shop. Actually, as he moves back, he's going to go ahead and pick up. Uh, what did he get? His tension bow there? Uh, yeah, no. I think that's what he picked up. Maybe a weapon blade and tension bow. Okay. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, I think we, we should talk about the builds again, actually, because Joker went for the Shatter Glass and is now just going quite defensive off the back of it. That's actually a little bit interesting. Uh, I feel like maybe going for a second offensive item early on here would have been a good plan. You've already got inherent defense in your composition through the Lyra, and to an extent, you know, the, the active camo traps. You're a very mobile hero. What you need to be doing on the side of Salty Potatoes is blowing someone up as they Oh, engage. sneaky stunned and paled the silence to come through in the blaze, G2. They are showing that maybe they have been practicing a little bit. Game one, I don't know if that was just a phenomenon. Yeah, G2 look a lot more coordinated this game. Their engages and their picks have been fantastic. At the same time, though, I don't think Salty Potatoes is necessarily reacting to a lot of what G2 is bringing to the table appropriately. You know, I mentioned it before, but in a certain sense, the best way of dealing with the G2 engagement, especially especially when Kroll went Tension Bow first, and for a large window of this game has been very, very squishy, is just to kill him, just to blow him up very fast. There's not a ton of sustain other than the Fountain, uh, that can come out against you. And if you just lay down some some arrows, lay down the on point, and then go for the execute even quite early uh, on that Black Feather 2, you can kill Dark Potato before he even gets on the back line. The key thing is, you know, you, you gotta have quick reactions, both to go for that kill, and also you gotta have quick reactions on your reflex block, because you really can't afford to get CC'd. Uh, that, that will make it difficult to execute on the play. But at the same, yeah, so... Regardless, Salted Potato is not really executing on that particular strategy. Maybe they're just playing for a later game. They're not totally in the moment right now in the early game. It's giving G2 a lot of space to start creating space for them. To start, you know, taking this turret out in the, in the lane. Getting them in a position where they can push up. Uh, I feel like this tension bow also quite late from Sneaky. I, I, G2's in a good position here, Humanist. Yeah, I, I, G2 in a great position. Sneaky looks like he's going for a similar build to what he went for last game. Uh, as we go ahead and talk about that, G2 is going to start up this gold miner as they do have control over the middle area of the map. And one of the things I was kind of noticing is just not a lot of vision control coming out from either Immense team. Yeah, there's a, a scout trap collected. or two down. One shot not going to connect. Immense gold payout for G2 as the net worth starting to stack up for them a little bit. 
Yeah, it's definitely starting to uh, to move firmly in their direction. I like the fact that they're putting pressure on the gold mine too. That's what you can afford to do once you take a turret. It uh, really does restrict the avenues of entry to that area that your opponents have. I'd like to see a couple more scout traps though. Uh, right now, sort of counterintuitively, the team with the most scout traps in the most aggressive positions are actually their opponent's salty tips. So get some of those down, it'll make it a lot easier to, you know, catch people defeated. out, which you, you're good at with things like your long range from Hell's Heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, you know, maybe you catch like a Stealth Kestrel at some point. That's always nice. Uh, definitely, definitely need some vision here, though. I think for Dark Potato also, like as a Kroll, any Kroll player, if, if you do not know that you have control over a brush, like when you move forward, you want to just like drop down, let your passive start to charge up. Yeah, but you have to yeah. clear out. You have to take every angle through the brush to make sure that they don't have vision on you a lot of times. Yeah, it's interesting. Johnny Nakoa is investing a lot in flares, and flares can be good. It, it's arguably the more snowball-y vision option um, because, you know, they, they do more instantaneously and then have less effect over time. So if you are able to do something with them, sure, it pays off even better and they're cheaper too. Uh, but if you're just sort of slowly and methodically choking your opponents out, if you're moving into the jungle and sealing their camps and you're not leaving behind scout traps, you're only getting like half the value out of that play that you could be. You, you could really be doing more with the effort that you've already taken to go into the enemy jungle and start to clear out their camps. So I'd like to see some, some scout traps for sure. At the very least, I'd like to see them actually clear out the scout traps that Clast has. Look at this. He's, he's got four at the entrance. Like, how does G2 actually capitalize on their lead right now? You very, don't. Very you can't do it. Class does too OP with his vision. But this is just another thing, uh, another reason to sing his praises. Now, Kiana's going to move forward and active camo from Sneaky will allow him to reposition backwards. <laughs> that looked like Kiana was just making a beeline straight up there to play games with the Kestrel. Yeah, that was that was weird. It's as if Salty Pit saw their opponents coming. But in any case, <laughs> it's as if he ran right past the scout trap. <laughs> uh, telegraphed, he sent him a text message. Yo, I'm on my way to Genkyu. Nothing triggers me more than this. All right, Crystal Sentry. G2, they're going to try and take it down again. <laughs> Salty Potatoes might consider Crystal reacting. Yeah, it's a little bold. They're not going to be able to get there quickly enough. For all the, I mean, to be fair, for all the vision in the world, if you're behind, you're behind. And it's definitely difficult for Salty Potatoes to actually make plays right now. I don't think they have that much pressure on them to do so. They do scale nicely. The only thing they're super scared about uh, as we move forward is, of course, you know, if Dark Potato gets on top of someone, he just basically eliminates him from the team with those weakness stacks, uh, especially as he gets more attack speed later on with his poison shift now. Uh, obviously, you gotta worry about your opponent's carry, no matter what, in the late game. G2, they're also not applying, you know, necessarily the same level of pressure that they could be. They are slowly, you know, winning the attrition war. They're killing these sentries and, and getting gold leads where they can. We'll have to see if they can translate that into another big objective, though. I'd like oh, to see man. a turret go down. I feel like if G2 lose this game, it's going to be throwy. Uh, they have such a, an advantage at this point because Dark Potato Keanu acts as just a pivot point. Like if Dark Potato gets onto a target, which he's moving forward, he's going to use that uh, that weapon infusion. And Keanu does find the stun onto the Kestrel, but she's going to move back. It's a little early on the reflex. Can they follow up here? The wait for it comes through. Sneaky silenced up. Dark Potato trying to move forward. Hondor can't quite get on target. Six breaking point stacks. And that's what I was about to mention right before the fight broke out. G2 able to pick the breaking point up on Hundor uh, means that any sustained fight is going to be massively in their favor. And it all comes down to Dark Potato getting on target. Keanu starting to get lit up. The one shot oh will come through. I don't know if that connected or not. I'm actually uh, not quite sure on that. Keanu, a lot of damage. Keanu's going to go down. Salty Potatoes have turned it. This is the moment they were waiting for. Jackson, Joker on the chase. Hundor low, low energy. Dark Potato, he's going to try and turn, stand his ground with the Crystal Sentry. Can he do anything? At the reflex and he comes in. Oh. And then, and then oh, almost gets it. Hundor will go down as well in the A Salty Potatoes. And it felt like maybe it would be turned around. Salty potatoes, just what patient, beautiful play. Really, really patient, beautiful play. And I think as well, you know, absolutely key that they were able to use Joker so well. He did his job in that fight beautifully. He was able to bait the From Hell's Heart as well as keep both carries occupied for an incredibly long time. That is the reason why Sneaky was able to get into the perfect position later on under his turret. Now we've picked up two Atlas Pauldrons on the side of Salty Potato. Both the Lyra and the Black Feather have one. The game is no longer in G2's court. They have a gold lead, but 
I don't really feel like they are in advantage at this point. You know, the, the Salty Potatoes has firmly uh, taken it back. Salty Potatoes. Welcome to the Vainglory 8. I'm going to take a moment to just say that uh, I very much do appreciate your playstyle. It's fun. A lot of these Challenger Series team teams have a very exciting playstyle. I think, like, the Salty Potatoes, Calamity Reborn. Like, even though the Potatoes have been playing defensively, like, the moment they get their opportunity, they chase all the way down get the ace. They're going to do a little bit of poking. The on-point connects. Bright Bulwark down. G2 really want to fight. One Alice Pauldron has landed on all three, but they jump forward. This is Dark Potato really locked onto Sneaky, but they can't. Can they find the kill? Sneaky's still alive. Dark Potato, he's taking too much damage. Oh. The one-shot's gone to Keanu. This is an absolute disaster. G2. Oh, no. They should no. chase the Hondor. 17 they should not breaking point stacks on point uh. connect. Next, Hundor, he's dropping the BP stacks off, has to use Boots to get out of here. I don't even know if he picked up Boots to upgrade there and get himself out, but just a disaster of a fight for G2. Look at how quick the decision was to go into Kraken. Hundor could still very easily be on his way back. Um, I, I mean, they had a flare, but there's, there's more angles, <laughs> right? Uh, but really impressive from Salty Potatoes. You just know they're sitting here and they're, they're saying to, to G2, how do you like these potatoes, right? <laughs> uh, but in any case, oh, good. No, it'll be how you like them Apfels later on in the season. We'll see. <laughs> All right. So really strong stuff. I think we got to talk about Sneaky a little bit here. He is playing out of his mind, just barely able to survive in that fight. Obviously, Class getting like a well-timed fountain down is huge, too. But you got to give props to Sneaky for knowing which direction to run, exactly when to pop the stealth, etc. Uh, Joker's doing a great job of being threatening enough that you can't just continue to run in and hope to, to get Sneaky after the stealth. This is a good siege opportunity for Salty Potatoes. Humanists, they might be looking to 2-0 G2 in their first week here. Oh my goodness, G2-0 going down in split two week one after this is supposed to be your comeback week. Hundor taking a lot of damage, this weapon Kestrel lighting the box up. Hundor can't stand his ground. Look at the crits, the first main crystal turret has melted. Kraken are still alive, a lot of damage coming out here. They're trying to get on the Sneaky Sneaky, invisible moving backwards, turns around, glimmer shots flying through, connects on the Potato and Hundor. G2 on a last breath here, can they? Stay alive, sneaky onto the vein crystal. It's melting down. Oh no, G2, what have you done? I did say earlier there was a potential. I felt like it would be a little throwy if they lost this game. They had such a strong lead. What five minutes ago, Jackson? Yeah. And then Salty Potatoes just flipped this game around on its head. Semantically, you could argue that the meaning of throw and drop are different, uh, <laughs> but I think in this game, they threw by dropping the ball. They didn't utilize their lead to do very much in the mid game. It gave so much time to Salty Potatoes. They had all the time in the world to get back into it. Well, I can't drop uh, it over to Munchables, but I can throw it to him. So with that, take it away, bud. Thank you very much, Humanist. I'll go ahead and catch that one. Just like Salty Potatoes have managed to catch themselves a 2-0 right there. Phenomenal performance from these guys. They have come into the Vainglory 8 with something to prove. Yeah, looking so strong in this matchup. I mean, this is a team that they <laughs> lost 2-0 to just last week. Obviously did their homework during this week and... You know, we talked about this. We talked to the players, saying that they've been practicing. They're feeling a lot more confident. They looked a lot more confident yeah. in this series. They looked amazing. There's one specific fight I really want to dig into in that game because G2 was so far ahead, and then Salty Potatoes. There was that singular moment where they just turned things around. Yeah, and I knew this was the defining. Mo the defining moment for Salty Potatoes because G2 is not able to secure a kill. And against a Lyra comp, they were trying to siege a second turret, didn't get a kill, and the Salty Potatoes saw that they're low. They went in, engaged. They got the ace off this play, which is huge for them because they got a turret, they got a full gold mine, they even the gold lead um, completely. And then they get two Atlas Pauldrons. And that's when I knew, I knew after that, that Salty Potatoes would secure this game because G2 needed to snowball and win. And this is such an amazing play by Dark Potato here. I mean, by um, by the Salty Potatoes here. They get the kill and, and base Sneaky barely survives um, that that damage there. And then he gets the ace and that just secures it for Salty Potatoes. So really good play for them. Yeah, just super from them. And the key thing is, as you mentioned, the Atlas Pauldrons. It, it makes the win condition from G2 just sort of wither away and die in the corner because at that point, 
they don't have the attack speed to come back. Yeah, it's so tough for this double weapon composition to burn th to work their way through multiple Atlas Pauldrons. But another thing about Salty Potatoes that I was super impressed with is just the fact that they were willing to run the exact same composition two games in a row. It's so rare nowadays that we see a team have that sort of confidence in themselves to just take the same composition say, you know what, we just won with this, you're gonna let us play it again. We don't care what your composition is, we don't care what your play style is going to be, we feel confident enough in that composition that you just gave us that we can win with it, and they were able to prove that they can win with this. And also, it's a big statement for Sneaky to uh, be able to have these wins, decisive wins, on a Kestrel as well as the Black Feather. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, they. This team had some decisive wins, as you worded it right there. Coming in 2-0, uh, I, I, and I feel like multiple members on this team could deserve the MVP coming out of that game because it, it was clearly a team effort, right? Okay. When we look at those fights, it wasn't like this was a one person just rolling the game over. This was very much a coordinated unit.